and it's the older model. It's like a pre-91, which when you look everything up, they, that's, that seems to be where they go. And it is old. Uh, it's hard to find a lot of stuff for it. I uh, replaced this maybe about 10 years ago, and uh, the sand started to do gook up and actually spit more back into the pool than it was taken out so I thought it was time to go ahead and try and change the filter and uh, it took me forever to try and figure out how to get this bad boy off of it but uh, I did figure it out and um, it was a screw off and a v-band so it's really 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 the old ones I didn't see anything on, on YouTube that uh, actually helped you on that one so I thought well maybe I should put something together at least for my old brain so next time I do this I can remember what I did or and maybe help somebody else out too so here was my experience trying to change a tagless T60 sand filter with a pack fab multi port on top. All right. So this is the filter that I had on there. <clears throat> and um, as you can see, it has uh, threads. Uh, in this case, it, it indicates a V thread. I think it's because when I had this was the older models have a V thread, and there's a newer threaded model, but it's a uh, a buttress type thread. So you got to make sure you get the right threads. In this case, it was a V thread. I bought this a long time ago. I didn't realize that when I was trying to take it off, and this was a pain to get off. All right, particularly after it's been sitting for a while. So what I had to do to get it off is I actually took the top of this off. All right, which is basically just secured with some screws screws and then this after a little bit of persuasion comes out like that and that leaves this open well you need to do that anyway because you're going to change the um, the filter uh, rings or the seal rings that are in there um, they're packed you can get them from any of your local uh, pool supply places which is what I'm going to do a little later on the day I'm going to have them actually change this one ring out uh, when I took it off it was a little bit tough uh, like I said this is a uh, a threaded version of it and unfortunately that's come loose uh, this is supposed to stay on there and it this hole lines up with that hole this hole here lines up with that hole right there so before I put it back together I think I'll put a little bit of uh, glue on there to glue it in place uh, to get it back together and then of course that mounts on this is the uh, filter stanchion and that mounts on this which just goes back into the, uh, the filter. so Taking it off was a little bit of a trick. Uh, like I said, I had to use a, uh, a uh, homemade wrench to get this thing off. It would not budge. So I, I built my own. All right, so uh, this is my wrench. You can see it's just a 2 8 that's been planed down. I drilled the whole pattern in it to match this whole pattern here, which matches that whole pattern there. I used that one to actually transferred over and the paper templates what I did okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here so I can make the last final bit of typing and all I did is I got some two and a half inch bolts I stick them down through I sort of make myself a uh, spanner wrench if you will so I took the uh, stanchion out that goes into the, the, the filter. And it just simply screwed back out. All right, now I'm going to screw it back in. It looks like straight schedule 40, so nothing really super. And I went ahead and sanded this down because what I wanted was a smooth fit into here. Uh, so when I screw this on, it doesn't drag or actually cause that to pop again like it did before. Nothing major, just smooth it down. It's really simple. Well, now that I've gotten the uh, seal out, I've got to do a little bit of cleaning in here to get this to seal a little properly. Um, it's hard time to find the seal. Pinch Penny didn't have it, but Leslie's did, so it's, uh, you can see the old one's worn. It needs to be new. And I got that uh, from Leslie's. Okay, so after a bit of scrubbing and some uh, naphtha, I think we're pretty much clean as I'm going to get it. Now it's time to see if I can get the O-ring in there, or the spider ring as they call it. Alright, so after you got to clean, you got a little grease on here. I use a little silicone lubricant. That'll make this thing slide in, hopefully. Easy. Open. A little tough when I try to dry. So, a little lubricant might help. 
Well, that's tight. You have to uh, you have to really really work it down into it. it seems to work, but you've got to uh, force feed your way around. It's not as simple as I thought it is because it's very tight down there. So I'm using a uh, my fingers and I'm just kind of really just kind of poking that down like that to get it there, and then I press with my fingers like that to try and get it into place. But you still gotta, like I said, you really gotta kind of poke that down like that to kind of pop it underneath. It's almost like a, it's almost like putting on an inner tube or a tire for a car. Well, nothing's easy. Yeah, what a pain in the butt that was. It looks like it's not gonna feed back in there, but uh, if you keep working it, with a, it, it finally goes in. I'm scared it's going to pop back out, so I'm going to put the top back on it, but it, it seems to be sitting uh, okay. I finished up with this side. might have been the first side. I'm not sure. All I know is it was uh, a bear to get in, but persistence pays off. So uh, what I did is uh, it's hard to get it down. Once you get that old new seal in it, it's so hard to get it down. Uh, lucky thing I bought some of these uh, bolts. They were a little longer than what they needed to be because the other ones are just barely fitting in there. So I'm gonna, I'll put those down really just to kind of like seat that uh, that seal in there. Uh, because the old one's thin, the new one's thick, it's hard to get it back down. So I just tied those on. They're just a uh, quarter inch, two, two inch with some washers. And they work pretty good to hold it down. I'm going to have to take it back off when I put it on anyway. So I want to hold it down while I'm doing the rest of the work on it. All right. Got a new old ring for the bottom. I think that's the more important. I can always get to the tops, but I can't always get to the bottoms. All right, so I need a little PVC. See if I can glue this back on, see if it'll take. Uh, so it doesn't fall back off, but it shouldn't. If it doesn't, I can always pull it. If it comes back off, I'll just, uh, I'll get some other adhesive, like a epoxy or something. I just thought PVC might work. We'll give it a try. So there's a plug in the bottom that I used to take out to drain the, uh, the water out. I did that while I was over there and it drained a lot of the water. As a matter of fact, I let it stand for a long time and it drained most of the water out and made the sand kind of nice and smooth enough to get out. So now I need to put this back in so I've uh, put a little bit of Teflon tape around it. And let's see if we can get this started. Get in there. Alright, I think so that'll do. I'll tighten her up and there you go. I'm not real sure if that's going to work or not, so hold on, I got some a uh, little bit of T2 plumber sealer, so I'm going to stick some of that on there just in case too on the last few threads and see if that works. That should work. Keep it out. If not, I can always put some uh, sealant around afterwards. Alright, so I'm ready to put the sand in. i got it reasonably positioned. I'm not going to use sand. I'm going to use uh, Zebrite which is about a 50% need, but uh, about three or four times the price. But it supposedly lasts like five or six years, and uh, if I'm gonna have to tear this thing out again, I'd like to bake it as long as I can. I took an old bucket that I found too, also to kind of give me a little bit of a raised lip to, to be able to pour it into. So basically what you're gonna do is just fill the bottom of it with, uh, well, that's a 50 pound sack, so I need three of those plus uh, another one, so to get three and a quarter, I need another tw uh, 12 pounds out of the other one, so I'll have, I'll have about 37 pounds left over, but uh, maybe I'll keep it for next time, maybe I won't. All right, so let's start the process of filling. It should take a while, and it's hot out here. All right, put the zebra in. This would be the best way to do it. Load a ton. Seem to help a lot. Just uh, give me something to pour into and uh, keep it from spilling around. So I just a cherry thing I found, but that worked out pretty good. So uh, now I think we got uh, 
bucket down and probably another 10 to go until we get to the 165 uh, number that we need to equate out to 325 for this 260 sand filter. Filter up. Water in there. Take a little bit, but it's okay. So I uh, put the O-ring in. Everything's good to go. O-ring here. And then I just take off the cap. Let's put on. Starting going down. Fit. The key is to I'm gonna cross thread it and let this bad thing just start going down. Like that. Now. Now, to make the final turn to get it into position, I had to make a a, uh, a wrench to do that. I had to make a wrench to take it off, and I had to make a wrench just to make that final off to get it lined up. What I did do before I, uh, before I did this was I uh, put this one as a dry fit a little high before it got tight. I lined everything up, and before I put the water in, I shifted everything around to make sure that this was in position before I put the water in there, because once you get the water in, you're not moving it. So I got that close enough to where I think that uh, I can make up any fitting that I need to make up. Uh, as long as I get this thing perpendicular this way, should be no problem. All right. So now it's time to take these bolts off right here, and let me show you what they are. So those are the bolts that I put in temporary to hold the top down while I started to do my mess. Now I'm going to turn around and get my uh, wrench, and I'll explain to you what that is. You can buy one of those wrenches for like $75 to $28 to $75, but or you can make one, which is what I did, because I'm cheap. All right, so I think everything worked. At least it looked like it worked to me. That's still intact. The wrench is okay. I'm, uh, I'm kind of liking that. It's kind of lined up. Okay, so this is the... Uh, what I keep my silicon grease in, I just squirt it in a jar. So the next thing is to uh, put the top on and bolt it down finally. And that'll be this piece right here. I've got it on. But what I'm going to do before I uh, before I do that, is I'm going to go put some uh, silicon lubricant. You buy it anywhere and there. It's for uh, O-rings. But I want to lube this thing down so it turns pretty smooth. Because it was turning a little tough when I put the other one down with that new new rubber piece so let's see if we can uh, make it slide a little better and work a little better by putting some grease in there some silicon grease in and it's easier to get out than a tube now what I'm going to do is I'm going to liberally apply some around this gasket so it'll seat and lube I want to be able to move freely all the way around Door. And I'll put some on the lid too. And now I'm just going to grease. I've greased all around here to try and uh, get the interface right. I'm not sure that why I would never do that uh, routinely, anyway, as easy as this top comes off of here. Maybe I learned a lesson this time. I can do a little preventative maintenance instead of just letting this thing just go to pieces. Alright. Okay, now that I've got everything lubed around, we just put this back in. Now you have to really make sure that you get this position correctly. So, and I took a picture beforehand just to make sure, but basically I always remember that flush uh, filter was on this side and back flush was on that side. So I just lined it up with those and put it in and set it down. Now you can see it's got the spring and the spring's got good tension on it. That's good because I've got a gap there. If I had no gap there, then I'd probably have to uh, get a new spring or a new top or something to, to replace it. But it's pretty easy. There's a pen that looks like it's in there and it, it seems to do the job. So we're going to use that one and now what I'm going to do is uh, tighten it down. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Okay, so once you get this in place, one of the tricks I figured out because of the springiness is I bought some uh, two-inch bolts and 
get the cheap ones, not the stainless steel ones. Get one that they're galvanized, whatever, doesn't really matter. And they're cheap. I think I paid maybe two bucks for all the bolts that I bought for this little project. You screw these down tight. Get them in as many places as you can get. They're open. Across from each other is excellent. But you want to get as many in there as you can get so you can tighten this thing down. Because what you're trying to do is you want to tighten it down with this. Get that clamp going. And I couldn't get one here. And I couldn't get one here. But I can get one here. So I put another one right there. And like I said, the idea is just to get these things on. So that then you can get your wrench and you can start to tighten them down. And you don't have to over tighten them. You're just going to tighten them down until they start to get some pressure. Work around clockwise. Like you said, you're trying to make the thing. You don't want to pinch it off. You want to just want to go down nice and smooth. See, I'm closing the gap. This side is a little unclosed, but that's okay. I have a solution for that too. Tighten this one down a little bit more. Don't over tighten. The last thing you want to do on this one is snap the damn piece off. You work your way around, just snugging and snugging. You get it nice and tight. And that's all you want to do. Now you want to get the original hardware and put it in there, and you should be good to go. All right, so now I have the uh, original hardware that I saved and put in this nice little bowl so I wouldn't lose them. It's a very good thing to do. And then we're going to work our way around on this one. Let's see if we can get these things started. So we just want to get them started like that. And we get our wrench. Underneath there. Oh, come on, get on there. Oh, Tighten that down. I get over here. Put this one in. Do the same thing here. Tighten that down. So, it helps if you grab the right wrench, which I didn't. This has turned out to be a number 10 and not a 3 8. I swore I used a 3 8 to take it off, but oh well. Tighten these bad boys down. There you go. Good and snug. And I've got another one over here. Same way. Right down in. Tighten it down. Put your wrench on. And give it a hand turn. You need to be really tight, tight. You don't want to bust it. There we go. And then we'll just take out the temporary bolts and continue to do the same thing. Or I could actually leave those bolts in there, but I'm not going to. Alright. Well, so I think that's it. It's good and tight. Slides a lot easier than the other one did. The thing is, is I can always now know how to take this thing out really quick and do the work. I don't have to change the sand filter, but I can actually field dress that once I get it done without having to take it out. So this should be it. All I got to do the rest, I think, is just uh, PVC work. Oops, one thing. Uh -huh. uh, almost forgot. Yeah, got to put that in there. I would have shot a lot of water out the side. That wouldn't have been pretty. It just screws in there with some. Uh, Teflon tape on it, keep it from leaking. 
and get her started in there. Your wrench. And just tighten her up. Where it's going to be. All right, and that's uh, pretty much the uh, done deal there. There you go. I just put the slip on the back. Now all I got to do is make those feeds too and tighten things down. And then uh, the first thing you do is a back flush. You don't put it straight in the pool because all that junk that I done it would just go in the pool. So we got to do a serious back flush. So I, I uh, added some water to the pool, so I got enough to do back flush, and we'll do that. And once I get it all hooked up, I'll uh, film that too, and then it'll be a wrap. Okay, dry fit. Looks like it fits pretty good. Well, a dry fit. Now it's glue time, and then test. All right. Well, it's been sitting about an hour or so. It should be dried. Let's give her the test run. brown. You can smell it. it. Smells funny. All right. All done. Going back in. You see to be working okay. Got flushed out. Looks really nice. And the water is starting to look better already. Yeah.